Khmer Rouge, Cambodians faced forced labor, starvation, and murder. Nearly two million people were killed. Today, after two decades of civil war, political isolation, and corrupt government, Cambodia is a nation at peace and in recovery. One in three people live on less than 50 cents a day. The infant mortality rate is the highest in Southeast Asia. Schools and hospitals are barely functional. Scars from the brutal past are visible everywhere. The rebuilding that is necessary after losing entire generations to war and mass murder is only beginning. But dedicated individuals, both Cambodian and foreign, have stepped forward to be part of the country's rebirth. They are bringing the crucial skills and training that the ravaged nation desperately needs. A lot of the details of this I really didn't know or understand until I traveled to Cambodia. But when I realized that close to two million people had perished, and here we were exclaiming that this would never happen again, I said, I'm going to do something. Don't know what I'm going to do or how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do something. And so I just started learning and helping and learning and helping. And uh, that has become what I do today, which is the work of Build Cambodia. Build Cambodia is a U.S.-based not-for-profit that works to strengthen civil society. We raise awareness of the country's needs. We coordinate support from abroad for organizations within Cambodia. We directly support organizations as a donor. We lead fact-finding tours to introduce people who want to make a difference to organizations doing just that. Cambodia's desperate need for human resources means that giving your time, your expertise, and your compassion can make a significant difference here. The Angkor Hospital for Children, the Harpswell Foundation Dormitory, and the Community Legal Education Center are positive examples of organizations founded through compassion and dedication. All three receive support from Build Cambodia and are visited on our fact-finding tours. Medical professionals were targeted under the Khmer Rouge and the healthcare system remains in tatters. Kenru Izu, a traveling photographer, was shocked by Cambodia's lack of pediatric care. He decided to help and founded the Angkor Hospital for Children. The hospital has given free, professional care to over 400,000 children since 1999. That child has uh, very severe lung infections, yeah. Oh. Yeah, very severe bronchiolitis. Yeah. She needs to be here for a while. Senior pediatrician Dr. Nyet Pise has worked at Angkor Hospital for over six years. <laughs> In addition to providing clinical care, he also conducts research and tutors junior staff. As the country rebuilds its shattered medical system, clinical care and training is desperately needed. Build Cambodia brings potential volunteers and donors to see the situation firsthand. Anchor Hospital is providing health care for the next generation of Cambodians while educating the country's next generation of doctors. Say, ah, okay, okay, okay. See, see. Okay? Much better, yeah? The Community Legal Education Center addresses the growing human rights issues of land grabbing and housing rights. There are you know, hundreds, if not thousands, of land conflicts going on in this country right now. Suddenly, for the first time, there's a lot of money to be made in land speculation in Phnom Penh. So the poor communities who've been living in the city since really the fall of the Khmer Rouge are very quickly being kicked off, being told they have no rights at all, and being brought out to resettlement sites. Evicted by soldiers, nearly 500 families were forced out of Phnom Penh. They were dumped at a distant relocation site named Pum Andong. Local NGOs addressing the desperate conditions there 
are supported by Build Cambodia. There are other communities in the middle of the city, they're fighting against that very same fate. There are resettlement sites that already have their spaces marked out for them. We hope that people realize that as difficult as it is in Cambodia, they can assert their rights. And if they do assert their rights, they're going to get a better result at the end of the day. The importance of education cannot be overstated, and Build Cambodia supports efforts to rebuild the education system eradicated under Pol Pot's rule. Today, widespread poverty makes school a luxury not all families can afford. Young women especially often have no chance to go to school for economic and social reasons. But there is something even more mundane holding women back. Universities in Cambodia don't provide housing for their students women are prevented from higher education for the simple reason of not having a place to live. This is not a problem for the male students who can live in the Buddhist temples. This is the bottleneck, the major obstacle for women getting higher education. We wanted to do more than just give free room and board. We wanted to really nourish them and encourage them to become leaders. Founded in 2006, Harpswell Dormitory provides housing, leadership training, and English lessons for 32 women from throughout Cambodia. My name is Hạt Chan Ni. My major is IT. I come from Preveng Province. Come from Dimitri Province. My name is Yum Kao Yan. I study at University of Cambodia. My major is English Literature. <laughs> My name is Seng Khon Niri. I am come from Ratanakiri province. The difference between countryside and city is in countryside there is no good school. In my province, there is no teacher that teach English. My family is not so rich, so I cannot continue my study without this dormitory. I choose to study law because it helped me how to sing and we can help people. I don't know, I, I want to help people since I was a child. I want to study and I want to be a leader in the future. The young women who seem to have a vision of the whole country and not just helping their families, those were the young women that we tapped to move into our dormitory. I didn't anticipate that they would bond so closely with each other. They will go through life together as a sisterhood. I have lived long enough to know that opportunities sometimes come only once. I felt like I could make a difference there, like I could help, because I felt uh, a hope there. We have come across some remarkable organizations and remarkable ordinary people that got over there and got involved with no qualifications, they just wanted to make a difference. If you decide to go over to Cambodia and get involved, you will make a difference in people's lives. Your skills and compassion will make a difference here. Learn more, join our fact-finding tours, contact Build Cambodia so that we can help match your time, talents, and donations to our network of organizations working to bring Cambodia a better future.